Thanks for staying with us. Now, the kidneys are two bean-shaped organs, each about the size of a fist. They are located just below the rib cage, one on each side of your spine. Now, healthy kidneys filter about a, um, a half cup of blood every minute, removing waste and extra water to make urine. The urine flows from the kidneys to the bladder through two thin tubes of muscle called ureters. Now, one on each side of your bladder. Your bladder st um, stores urine and your kidney, uh, your kidneys, your ureters and your bladders are part of your urinary tract. Ha! Ah, it's medical terminology. <laughs> we cannot overemphasize the importance of the, a healthy kidney. And um, we want to speak on um, the kidney care. How can we start to preserve our kidneys and how can we prevent diseases? That's a question. Now, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Eight zero three eight four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wisho Africa One with the hashtag Wisho. It's obvious that I do not have a clue <laughs> what I'm supposed to be talking about. Well, hey, please, do you know anything about your kidney? Well, mm -hmm. I discovered today that <laughs> in my entire life, you can be born with one kidney. Hmm. Did born? You know? I didn't know about uh, that. I, I thought I everybody has two kidneys. Same sure. thing here. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> what an amazing discovery. It's an so amazing discovery. <laughs> and I'm happy we have Jennifer, how about you? <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bring it out again. <laughs> Dr. Banji Awoshika is a U.S. based physician with a strong interest in wellness. He specializes in nephrologist, hypertension, dialysis, and kidney transplant medicine, uh, medicine rather, with an emphasis on preventive care at um, his practice, West Orange. Nephrology Orlando, Florida, where he's here live with us in studio, Lagos, Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us, Doc. Thanks for having me. Okay, so this kidney matter, as you can see, we are all very, very <coughs> want to embarrass ourselves on national television. We don't know, we don't know anything about the kidney. And you know, I, I discovered that many a times. Um, the organs that we don't see, we really don't really pay attention and we don't take care of those organs because, you know, we don't see, we don't even understand the magnitude of work that they do. And one of those organs, because you just wake up one day, you see posts on Instagram, please go fund me, want to want in kidney dialysis, I'm wondering. So how did we get to where you now need those kind of extreme transplants and all that? Couldn't there have been some level of um, preserving or prevention and all of those things? And I realized that truly, there are things that you need to do, you know, to take care of those internal organs that people don't see. But we really don't pay attention to those things, you know. So why is that? It was World Kidney Day, so it was important that we brought somebody to talk about the things that we are not seeing, even though they exist. <laughs> They're the ones that keep us alive, you know. But how important is kidney um, health to any human being? It's, kidney health is very important. Kidneys are... Um, like, you, like you so eloquently mentioned already, they're very, very um, hidden in our bodies. There's no sign, even, in fact, to examine, when you get, you get to examine the patient for their kidneys, it's very rare that you actually feel them. That's how, you know, hidden they are. But in that okay. same vein, they're actually hidden in terms of symptoms and signs. By the time you have symptoms and signs of your kidneys being a problem, in most cases, you need to go on dialysis. Wow. By the time you have symptoms and signs. Pain is the most common symptom that makes you realize that there's something wrong anywhere in the body. Mm. And if your chest is hurting you, your chest is hurting you, you might, have, might be having a problem with the heart. With the kidneys, only three things really would cause pain. A, a bad kidney stone, and a bad kidney stone is really bad. A kidney stone is the nearest a man will come to experiencing childbirth. Mm. Yeah, it's that kind of pain. And then a bad kidney infection. And by the time you have a kidney infection that's that bad, it causes pain, you will know that there's a kidney infection going on. And the third thing is when you have some kind of mass pressing on the kidney, but that's quite rare. So in most cases, you don't have kidney pain, no kidney symptoms. So the only way you get diagnosed in most cases is if you're not making urine, if you're making blood in your urine, or if you are having problems with hypertension. In most cases, they get, you get lab work done, and it's coincidentally found that you have kidney problems. Now, we're wising up, and we're doing more screening. Um, people will go and see their primary care doc and have a test done, the creatinine. 
and the urea to find out how the kidney function is. And that, those particular chemicals are meant to be in a very steady state in the blood. So if it goes up, we know that the kidney is not clearing it like it should. So it's a, it's a surrogate marker for kidney function. And unfortunately, there's not enough screening going on. So in many cases, we don't even know that there's a problem with the kidney. And you know, it's one of those things where, because there are no symptoms, unless you're actively screening, unless you have a program, or you're seeing a primary care physician regularly, you wouldn't know you have problems with the kidneys until you do. Hmm. So it's about preventing it. Unfortunately, when your kidneys fail to the point where you have symptoms, you, all you can do is go on dialysis. And if you're waiting until you go on dialysis to treat the patient, you miss the bus. Because then all you can do is manage dialysis. There's no cure. It doesn't reverse. You go on dialysis until... You get a kidney transplant until you go to a better place. Mm. Wow. Out so, of this world, of, obviously. So how, let's say for, let's say I, I currently have a healthy kidney. How do I prevent myself from having any of these infections or diseases or getting into trouble with my kidney? Fantastic. And, and that's what the name of the game should be, prevention. Um, the most common thing to prevent it is, and this is World Water Day. Water is key. Water is key for everything, right? Blood is, has so much water in it that it's very important. And blood goes everywhere. Everywhere alive that the body blood goes to. So you need enough water to do that. So not drinking enough water affects every single cell in the body. Wow. But drinking enough water affects every single cell in the body. So drink enough water. Question is how much is enough water? Rule of thumbs, it should be one ounce per kg per day. So if you weigh 70 kg, it will be 70 ounces. It will. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> so 70, I was 70, 64 ounces is, is, is um, two liters. Mm. So those 75 CL bottles I see here, um, it'd be one and a half, it'd be two and a half of those for a 70 kg man or lady. Um, that's it in a rule of thumb. But if you're exercising or if you're someone that sweats like I do, you need more than that. I'd say you take another liter for another liter to a half liter for every hour worked out mm. or for every hour of sweating. You have to replace the water. The other thing that you focus on to prevent kidneys from becoming a problem is what you eat. I was going to say that yeah. are there causes like the kind of things you put yeah. into your system? Yes. But remember, what you eat affects everything. Definitely. You literally become what you eat. Mm. And unfortunately, we are all, you no, know, many people are living to eat. Hmm. You have to start learning how to eat to, to live. live. Wow. It's a different mindset, it's a shift. Because you become more intentional about what you're eating, when you're eating, how much you're eating, what you're doing while you're eating. All these things factor into it. The basis of everything I teach, because my passion really is wellness, preventing disease, period. But of course, kidney disease. Um, the most important thing is to realize the key thing that we have to fight is inflammation in the body. And the main thing that stimulates inflammation is fat. Fat. Fat in our food. And the main vehicle for fat, is it plants? No. It's animals. Animals. Meat, you chicken, said this thing before, um, turkey, you see that turkey, that chicken, meat, it ain't going nowhere though. Fish, <laughs> Tell us a better thing. Fish, I'm mm. saying fish sweet, and God means, everyone thinks fish is a healthy food. It's healthier than meat and chicken. Mm. But it has fat cells in the fiber of it. And the fish strands, there's fat cells there, and they incite inflammation. So I was speaking to someone today, and they were telling me about how their families are living to much older ages. And it's very true. Many people live to older ages and they eat the worst nonsense in the world. Mm. I always say they have fantastic genes, or there's something in the environment that's protecting them. But we've seen it very clearly that people that are healthiest are the vegetarians. So I, I said a bad word there. I said a curse word for many people, but it's the truth. Now well, we can't all be vegan though. And I agree. It's gonna be boring. I agree. Although it's boring because you say so. You can make anything boring interesting if you really want to. But what's 
life that sense so if you're not enjoying what you're eating like you said okay. like, like it takes away the joy <laughs> the joy of eating <laughs> I, I, the joy of living yeah. okay okay and i and i hear that but i found out that i didn't have to be totally vegetarian i was vegetarian for two years to really really test the water before i could start really pushing my patients towards it and what what started that whole journey for me was the fact that i was tired of my patients on dialysis no, my patients had no matter on dialysis, always progressing to the point where they need it. No matter what I did, no matter what medications I gave, I can slow down a little bit, but I couldn't reverse it. Then I found out the only thing that I could really reverse it was decreasing inflammation. I would be a plant-based diet, but I couldn't really push it with the passion with which I push it now without doing it. Mm. So you I did it. had to test it. I tested the water. I did it for two years. Mahatma Gandhi style. Y yes, and he got results. I know I'll get results. <laughs> And, and the funny thing was, I went through the two years, the first couple of months were, were tough because I, I'm a carnivore. I love my meat, not even chicken, I my meat. But I realized it was doable, and I did it. And then on further studies, I realized that, or I found out that you didn't have to be totally vegetarian. It was more about the amount of time you spent away from the fat. So if you took your meat, I'm talking about the whole cow, one day, and you did nothing for the next five, six days, you're okay because you're allowing inflammation to go down. If you take one piece of meat, you take the whole cow, the it's body the gets inflamed, thing. period. It goes to an inflammation, a cascade of events that leads to inflammation. And once inflammation starts, it won't stop until five or six days. So it's not about how, it's not about how much you eat, it's about how frequently you eat it. Mm. So if you can do it once a week, fantastic. If you have to do it twice a week, you can get away with that. Three times a week, you're getting into a bit of sticky water. Anything more than that, you're indulging. So does that make meat and chicken bad foods? No. I'm a sweet tooth. So the same way I would treat cheesecake, which I love, I would treat meat. Mm. I'll take it as an indulgence. It's about recognizing what it is. It's an indulgence. It's not a bad thing. We're meant to indulge to rejuvenate. We're meant to indulge to socialize. Mm. But you don't socialize, well, okay, let me, let me, <laughs> let me be cautious of that. You don't, you don't really party every day. Mm. If you treat it the same way you treat your your social life, where you go out to do things, that's one of the things I try to do. I try to go out to eat my meat and chicken. So it's a celebration. I celebrate with it. As opposed so to having can, it... You can home. just limit it to like once a week exactly. or twice a week. So you give your body time, you know, to process it. Exactly. Okay, exactly. you know what? Let's quickly go on a very short break. When we come back from the break, I have more questions. Stay with us for very back. All right, so if you just tuned in, we're discussing kidney care, prevention and disease um, prevention with Dr. Banji, or preservation rather, and disease prevention with Dr. Banji Awashika. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. So, I mean, you talked about um, checks because, again, kidney is one very silent um, you really, by the time you start to get all of those symptoms, somehow it's already too late okay. because, you know, the damage is already done. So if we want to be very conscious about those, I mean, especially our kidney, an internal organ, how often should we, you know, go see doctors and, you know, do checkups and all of that, just the way, you know, people wait here until your, your mouth is swollen before they go <laughs> to the dentist, you know, because dental care is almost like kidney care. People, until you really have... You know, a swollen gum. You you don't think it's yeah. important for you to visit. Yeah. You know, the doctor, um, the dentist. So, how often should we, you know, test, you know, and go for screenings and all of that for the, for the kidney? So it's interesting what you just said about the dental, the teeth being like the you know like the kidney in terms of you know until you, your mouth is falling out, you won't go to the dentist. But there's usually when that happens, there's a very short amount of time for you to get that done. With the kidneys, you have 100% kidney function. It's not until you get down to 15%, sometimes 10%, or I have a patient that go down to 2% before you actually need dialysis. Hmm. So in many cases, those, you have so much time to find out. So it's important you see your doc at least once a year. I say twice a year, but at least once a year. And you should do blood work. So some people say, some people say they won't see their doc, but the doc did no blood work. Then as far as I'm concerned, you got no screening done. He might not have seen you, ask if there's nothing wrong. You said there's nothing wrong, and you go home. 
that's not comprehensive enough. You have to be more comprehensive, do lab work that will detect the problem you're trying to prevent. And it's a simple blood test. And it's a simple urine test. You know whether you have kidney function. You know what stage kidney function you have, because then it's a chronic kidney disease. You have the acute kidney disease, and you have the chronic ones. The chronic ones are usually the ones that lead to you needing dialysis. The acute ones can become chronic, which will lead to you needing dialysis. But it can also be reversed. The Sorry, acute Gloria, ones I know you reversed. want to come in. I just want to ask a question. Two things. The people that eat a lot of meat or maybe drink a lot of alcohol, are they more at risk? You know, so, I mean, I'm saying those kind of people, maybe they should be going maybe four times a year to go and see the doctor. <laughs> just, I'm just checking. Like, your lifestyle, does it also also gives you an idea how often you should go see your doctor. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the most common cause of kidney failing is diabetes. The most common cause of diabetes is fatty food. Now, I'm, I know I'm saying things that some people consider controversial because some people say it's a sugar, some people say it's, it's totally genetic. There are different thought processes out there. But one thing that is clear to me is the fact that you can reverse certain diseases if your lifestyle changes accordingly. If you start learning to eat to live. You let food become your medicine. And you become intentional about that. Because it's going to be about what you're eating and what you're doing. Exercise, as opposed to being a sedentary cow potato, that's very, very key. So you eat, you exercise, you rest. You have to rest. That's when the body heals. You rest. Relationship. Relationship is key. What kind of relationship are you in? Because it's a stress management. And then the mindset. What kind of mindset do you have? Is it growth-minded or fixed-minded? Are you going to be compliant with what you need to do? Or are you going to continue waiting for the symptoms to come? The mindset. But going back to your question, meat is a big issue because it causes diabetes. It has fat in it. And fat literally is the fat that sticks in the keyhole and prevents you from putting the key in. You need the key to go in for insulin to drive sugar into the cells. If the key can't go in, sugar stays outside the body, outside the cells, that's when you have diabetes. So once you get the fat out, and the key can go into the key into the keyhole, diabetes goes away. So you have to remove the fat. By decreasing the fat going in and being creative to burn the fat that you have in there. That's where exercise comes into it. So meat, definitely. Alcohol, not as directly. Alcohol can dehydrate you. And dehydration is the most common cause of acute kidney failure. Because the kidneys are like a flower. You need to water them regularly. That's where water is key. And if you don't, they start to wilt. The most common reason why people come to the hospital with kidney problems is dehydration. And it's as, simply as just, it's as simple as just rehydrating them, and the kidney failure picks back up. So sometimes that is that simple. But when you get to the point where that same dehydration or any other insult in the kidney is a chronic problem over weeks, the definition is three months of it. Three months of the kidneys being weaker than 90% is chronic kidney disease. And there are stages there. The last stage is end-stage renal disease, where you end up going on dialysis. Mm. So the alcohol, not directly, but it can well, it dehydrate. Can lead, it's because of the dehydration. Right. Glory. <laughs> yeah. A lot to take in. It is. Part of it is like, OK, blow on the face for me, especially when it comes to stress management and all of that. Mm. And this topic is really um, important to me, especially because I've lost two people close to me to kidney failure. I'm sorry to hear that. So, yeah. So I'd like to find out, um, you talked about vegetarian. So an average person, me personally, when I think about vegetarian recipe, I see it like in the Nigerian context, something that's expensive to maintain. So what does it entail to uh, maintain a, a vegetarian meal? And how is it affordable for, so I see it like something, a particular class of people who can afford it, can any normal Nigerian or wanting to keep a healthy diet, maintain such a recipe? The IRC in the market. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good question. Uh, and the, the truth is, it all depends on how creative you're willing to get. So if you don't want to be creative at all, yes, it's expensive. Because you have to go to where it's ready-made, either the ready-made packets or go to vegetarian um, restaurants. Go to an Indian restaurant. Most of the menu is vegetarian. Yeah. And it's delicious food. Yeah. Expensive, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, you you're not ready to do that. I love Indian food, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Indian food is delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. And Thai food as well. They have yeah. good Thai dishes. But if you're willing to get creative, everything you eat 
can be vegetarian. Just take the meat out. Okay. The meat is in the center of the plate now. Everybody has yeah. their meat in the center. Just take it out. <laughs> it's not a vegetarian meat. <laughs> it's that simple. It's that simple. Now, vegetarian, if you're taking lots of starch, it's still vegetarian. But starch, if you don't burn it, turns to fat. And then it still has all the problems fat has. So starch is an issue. And you can chow down a ton of starch, much more than you can chow down a ton of meat. People can get rice into a system in bowls that you be like, yeah, you'd be like right. how did that even happen? Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important that you get to that point where you recognize that your meal is full of starch. You cut the starch down. And the amount of starch you take should depend on how much exercise you're doing that day. So if you're moving, the starch should be coming down. If you're not moving at all, you shouldn't take any starch, or take many minimal. If you're running a marathon, you starch. Some people actually starch load, but they really load on starch because of the marathon they're about to do. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on how much you're taking in, in terms of how much you're exercising, sorry. So vegetarian meals don't have to be expensive if you get creative with it. More vegetables, more fruits, more legumes, beans, lentils, lentils. Chickpeas, chickpeas, hummus, those are all legumes. I call them the fillers. You should fill up on that before you eat starch. Get rid of the hunger urge. Don't go to hungry to eat rice. Eat your salads, your fruits, your beans first. Then you can take your rice. Because yeah. then all you need is a taste. So now there are so many confusions around this thing. How good is oat? Oatmeal? Yes. Fantastic. Because some... It's fiber. <laughs> it's soluble fiber. You know, when you see some skit on, online, you're about to eat, they say, no, it's no longer good for this. It's no longer... F like, there's so much confusion in yes, the air. There is. Yeah, so people are now wondering, so what do I really eat? Yeah. Because if you touch here, even now they say too much of water is too, is, is yes, bad. This, too much of this is bad. So people are actually a bit confused as to what exactly do we want to eat, you know. Today, was it two days ago I saw something on eggs, you know, how, you know, um, it's causing a lot of disease, the cholesterol, blah, blah, blah. Just kept quiet. I didn't say anything again. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of confusion out there. So, oats are good. Oats are good. Okay. Egg white is good. Mm -hmm. Egg yolk is fat. That's what I love the best. It's fat. It's Sorry. all right. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot kill no, nice. it's fat. It's fat. It's fat. <laughs> smoking yeah. is bad for every single organ in the body. Because okay. smoking does something to the endothelium, to the lining of the blood vessels, and it causes them to... Um, start the process of inflammation. The lining of the blood vessels houses the pharmacy, keeps the pharmacy of the body away from the blood. That lining is crucial to, to be made to stay intact. Cigarette smoking damages that. And once it damages that, it causes inflammation. And wherever it causes inflammation, that part of the vessel can close up. So your heart attacks come from the closing up of the, the blockage of blood going to the heart. Your strokes, blockage of blood going to the brain. The kidneys can also have that same problem. Anywhere in the body that blood goes to, which is everywhere in the body, can have that same problem with cigarette smoking. So the one habit that you can stop that will improve virtually every disease you have. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Shisha. Interesting. Shisha oh. is almost as bad as smoking. Because it has all kinds of substances in there. Because they yeah. tell you that they will say, how's that is vaping? Mm -hmm. It's not vaping. <laughs> Maybe you're vaping air, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you're vaping nicotine, you're smoking. Yeah. yeah. It's the same yeah. thing. It's actually so worse. Shisha, cigarettes, cigarettes, they all are in the same family. Absolutely. I hope you are hearing mm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I just take marijuana out of that. Because mm. I don't put marijuana in that same family, they're not. Marijuana is a safe herb. Cigarette smoking with the nicotine and um, the vape, uh, not the vaping, the shisha, with all the stuff it has in it, because it has different stuff in it. Mm. I always talk about how it's so popular today, and it's popular amongst young people. Young mm. ladies. Young people. Young ladies, nice. especially. You know? Because everyone likes that idea of the smoke. Yeah, they'll be popping. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, why did you take out my Go ahead. Yeah. What causes um, kidney stone, mm. and what's the, what's the correlation or connection between the kidney and urinary tract infection? Okay. So, the kidney stone comes as a result most commonly because calcium, which is the most common kidney stone, is being leached out, it's being taken out of the bone, where there's plenty of it, and it's spilling into the blood, and from the blood it spills into the urine. And when the urine is not dilute from lots of water, it gets concentrated, and the crystals of that now form the stone crystallize out of the urine and form a stone, because mm -hmm. there's not enough water. 
Now, what causes the bone to dump calcium into the blood? Acid. Acid from what? From animals. Oh. Mm. So, so it goes back to going that. back to... Back to oh. it. <laughs> and you'll find that's a common theme. Because you're going to ask you different things. It goes back to... No more eating and eating. No just... just <laughs> the animals. We're literally smiling ourselves into... Yeah. Into... Uh, I want to ask, though, because when she this. talked about the urinary tract, you know, because sometimes some people use the restroom, they go to pee, and it's, first of all, very concentrated and has a very heavy stench. Is that a sign? Because I know it's a sign of dehydration, but it's also the, is that a sign that says, you know what, you might need to go check your kidneys? So the smell you get from a urinary tract infection usually depends on what bug is causing it. Mm. What bug is causing it and what else you're eating. Because many things, like if you eat asparagus, it has a particular smell mm. in the urine. So it depends on what you're eating. But the, to answer the question you asked me earlier, urinary tract infections, the urinary tract, as you said earlier, um, well, it comes all the way from the... The, for, for the females from the outside of the vagina all the way up through the cervix um, to, the vagina, to the bladder, mm. right? I'm sorry, forget that. There's a urethra that's located um, above the um, opening for the vagina. And it goes to the ureter, urethra, it goes to the bladder. From the urethra, it goes to, that's the tube that go, connects the outside to the bladder. And from the bladder, there are two tubes, like you said, I'm just repeating you, yeah. that get connected to the kidney. Yeah. Now, anywhere in that tract, from the kidney to the outside, can get infected. Usually, it's usually lower. So it'd be the urethra and sometimes the bladder. Not usually the tube that goes to the kidney or the kidney itself, because then it's a serious infection. Mm. But the lower urinary tract infections are the most common ones. Usually in ladies, most commonly related to sex. Because with sex, especially aggressive sex, you're massaging that area and you're pushing bugs into the urethra, mm. right? So it's most common in that setting. Or if you're not hydrating, again, hydration, key. Because hydration is a plumbing. It causes more volume to flow and helps to push out whatever is sticking to the walls of the, of the tract. Hmm. So, so, but to answer that question about the smell, mm. the smell will come from the bugs. What, depending on what bug is causing it. It doesn't necessarily, if there's a smell, it doesn't mean you have an infection. It can mean that you're dehydrated, like you said, or you've eaten something that will cause that kind of smell. Mm. Of course, hygiene um, plays into it as well. So I, I really need to go back to the marijuana yes. while you set yes. it aside. Why did you set that? I think it's going to. So you need to help us understand. Yes, Clarify. why is it um, um, separated from cigarettes and the other? Sure. So with marijuana, the herb, my, the herb marijuana, cannabis, um, has different. Um, chemicals, if you will, ranging from CBD all the way to something called THC. Mm. And that spectrum of chemicals comprise marijuana. All of them have health benefits. All of them. All of them, especially the THC part of end of the spectrum, can be psychoactive, can make you high, can give you a sense of euphoria. But unlike the high from all the other drugs out there, especially the ones that you've heard about in the news that have caused death from overdose, like fentanyl or, or even heroin. It doesn't cause respiratory depression. It doesn't depress your breathing center. Marijuana does not do that. And for that reason, it's much safer. There's no, so there's no risk of an overdose. If you get high, it will come down. So when I, I have a marijuana clinic in Orlando, and when I prescribe it, I tell my patients that we have to start slow. If you have not used it before, start slow, because they're not looking for the high. You're looking for the medicinal effect. If you do get the high, though, it will come down. Now, if you're taking it recreationally, you're looking for the high. That's a totally different ball game. Now, you can, some people take a mix. They either use it for medicinal, but they enjoy the high with it. And the high from medical marijuana is much safer than the high from alcohol or the high from any of the hard drugs out there or the, the sensations you get from shisha or from smoking because the downsides the negative effects of marijuana are very minimal. It usually happens as a result of excess or not taking holidays. I would tell my, tell my patients take a holiday from it for a week, two weeks. If you're taking it every day, well, take a week off. I the question because they say anything you smoke is bad for your health. Yes. So are you talking about, so when you talk about medical uh, administration of um, cannabis, are you talking about still smoking it or maybe a different kind of um, way of um, taking it? Sure. So it depends on what you're using it for. So patients that have cancer, um, in many cases, they can't quite smoke it. Some of them can. Um, and if they can, we allow them to do that. That's fine. But there are various vehicles for delivering marijuana. You can 
You can chew it. You can, you know, you can take it as a pill. You can take it as a gummy. You can take it as a liquid. You can take it as an oil. You can take it as a, as a patch. You can take it as a cream. In other countries, actually have them as douches. So it's given intravaginally or interrectally. So there are various ways you can give marijuana. Most common way is smoking it. And yes, you're totally right. The only thing that should go into the lungs is oxygen, right? But smoking it for the medicinal effects, we're still okay, okay that. So I'll still prescribe the same thing. That's your, your preferred route. Enjoy. If it's marijuana, no, not no, smoking. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But you see, we have to rise up to the fact that, mm -hmm. yes, there's a downside of marijuana in the sense that if it's done irresponsibly, it gives you an increased depth of perception. So if you're driving, cars may look closer to you than they actually are. Things like that. So you have to be, you have to be aware of what you're doing. And I always tell them that if you're using it, don't, don't drive initially. See how you feel. See how you're you affecting your surroundings. Do you want to recommend um, legalizing marijuana in Nigeria? Absolutely. But it has to be done responsibly. Hmm. It has to be done responsibly. It should be controlled by the physicians, at least to start, before it gets recreational. And there has to be much more education. Because there's a place for it. Like alcohol. There was this alcohol prohibition in the 20s. 1920s, uh, a whole century ago. But then alcohol was bad. Was, they had to control it. They had to, but now they've changed their minds about that. It's not the same as cigarettes. That we've just been finding, it's just been getting worse and worse in our history. It's a fact. What we're finding <laughs> out about it. I think we'll have to bring you back to discuss this marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we've, we've learned quite a lot today. Um, Gloria, I think you have a message. So, I mean, it's, um, if I hear you correctly, our meals and water those are two things that you should start to befriend when it comes to your kidney health right and rest and rest you did we didn't talk about sleep so you should have at least six hours of sleep mm. now everyone is different my dad is okay with five hours of sleep he's done it for years he's up at four o'clock every morning and he's not in bed till about 11 sometimes 10. but with me i've learned that if i have six hours of sleep i'm good for 24 hours if i have five hours of sleep, i'm good for 20 hours i need a nap at some point if i have four hours of sleep so one hour of sleep for me it creates to four hours of activity where I don't need to sleep for those four hours. Mm. You have to learn your body and know what works. And most of us, by the time we get to you know, the age we are today, we know when we are functional which is as a result of our sleep and when we're not. We just tend to ignore it because we have to continue you know, Grinding. hustling, to grinding <laughs> through life. Got to sleep. Absolutely. Glory, quickly take a moment. Um, this is from our regular fan, Daniel Ilo. He says, good evening, my beautiful sisters of what are you saying? The kidney is a very important organ in the body, but people ignore it and take it for granted. People eat carelessly and don't have a healthy diet. What we eat determines how healthy our kidneys are. Eating healthy makes our kidneys healthy. There are people who need to check themselves regularly in a year because once a year is not good enough, because once a year is not good enough, someone Someone told me that to treat kidney stones, it's to drink hot or warm water in the morning after waking up <laughs> to, <laughs> to remove it. <laughs> God will help us all to take care of our kidneys. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> You're not quite laughing. Don't so, drink hot so, water, hot <laughs> to melt the stone. After he said it's for our concentration of. <laughs> I agree with the water. He's yeah. spot on. Not temperature parts. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's beyond my own, my, my own, my own medicine. But the water is key. But I hear that it's actually some people say room temperature water is best, you know, instead of taking cold water. So the the thinking behind that is that it's it's more in, it's more physiological. Mm. So what your body temperature is internally would agree more with what room temperature, think? right? Absolutely. The other schools of thought would say, would say you can take much more volume if it's room temperature as opposed to cold water. Mm. But I say, if I'm going to talk to you about drinking water. You're not drinking any water. Drink any water you want. Mm. But drink water. Mm -hmm. Just drink water. Drink. Get it in. Thank you so much, Doc. I think we had a lot of fun discussing kidney. Who knew medical conversation would be this interesting? <laughs> <laughs> really interesting. I want to go and say some <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> I didn't just say that. It's possible. <laughs> Oh, of course, the doctor will come. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doc. Thank You're you, welcome. Jennifer. Thank you, Glory. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. Take an oath to stay hydrated. See what the doctor said about water. 
and uh, make healthier food choices to ensure proper maintenance of your kidney. I mean, everything the doctor has said about meat, water, is just, you know, all embedded in that quote. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to the screen. Enjoy.